the handle to the print writer object and whatever I write to the print writer object will be displayed on my screen on the web page okay so whatever I pass to the out dot print ln statement will be displayed on the screen basically it, this will be passed in as a response to the user okay and once a user sees I'm sorry once a client or the web browser sees that the type of response is of type HTML it now prepares itself so that it can take in the HTML and pass that HTML and, and render a very nicely beautiful uh, user format uh, text to the uh, client right to the end client so what I have put in this out.println method is nothing but pure HTML code right so whatever I put in this out.println is HTML. I put the HTML tag the body tag and hello world text so and I end the body tag and the HTML tag so basically if uh, I have to write this HTML code uh, in a HTML file the output would be a simple hello world in the response okay, let, let us just try that what I will do is I will simply say test okay and whatever I have written in my class in there the HTML code I'm just putting that code in this HTML file and I'll save this file and I'll say test dot HTML okay so let's see what happens when I okay so the result is a simple hello world text is displayed on my web page okay so the same thing should be displayed once I execute my hello world application the result should be similar to what we have just seen it should uh, just uh, display a web page with the text hello world on it right so let's see uh, later if uh, that uh, is a result what we will get or not okay right so now uh, the do post method similarly the do post method also takes a request and response object and since uh, uh, my do get is going to be called the do post will not be called right so that's the reason I didn't put in any uh, business logic in do post and I put all of the business logic in the do get if your type of method was post uh, the do post method would have been called and uh, you write all your business logic in the do post okay and uh, finally the destroy method uh, wherein I simply give the um, print statement saying that I'm in the destroy method okay so this is my servlets class so I've, uh, what I've done I've simply uh, written all the callback methods and I've put uh, print statements in all of the callback methods and I have performed some business logic in my do get method right okay so we are done with number one the servlets class okay number two the web.xml configuration file let's see how my web.xml configuration file looks so this is my uh, web.xml configuration file for the servlet application my hello world servlet application okay so you can ignore these first uh, five lines um, because uh, you simply need to copy these uh, from you can copy it from any of the existing web.xml files and uh, put it in your file so uh, you don't need to worry much about this at this point of time so you have this xml file uh, which has a web app element and this ends here at the end of the file okay and i've simply given a display name text servlets to this application okay. uh, the most important part in this uh, whole web.xml file for us now is uh, this part which I've highlighted so th this is the servlets and the servlets mapping element so when a request comes to a particular servlet and uh, let's say 
this was hosted on uh, my serverless application was hosted on yahoo mail okay on yahoo okay if the user would have entered yahoo.com slash hello what would have happened so the web server takes in this url www.yahoo.com slash hello and tries to find a match for this url in my web.xml okay so here you see there is a url pattern uh, which says hello a url pattern which ends with hello right and it looks like there's a match to this url pattern okay so it sees the url sent by the client and tries to find a match in the url pattern and it sees okay looks like i find a match okay and it goes to the corresponding servlet name for that url pattern sees hello world okay now tries to find this hello world servlet name in one of the servlet tags and it finds yes there is a servlet element servlet name tag servlet name element in the servlet element okay so it finds a match in one of the servlet element okay so after it finds a match it goes to the corresponding servlet class right? and now it sees that the servlet class is the class which have written com dot shell balipu dot servlet dot hello world servlet so it loads this particular servlet calls the init method first for the first request and for the subsequent request it calls the init i'm sorry and uh, for the first request it calls the init method and then calls the service method which will in turn call my do get method where i have written my business logic right and for all subsequent requests it is only going to call the service method which calls the do get method in turn so this is how uh, a re URL requested by the client is ultimately mapped to a servlet serving the request, right? And the servlet is executed. Okay. All right. So we have done with step two as well. We got our servlets class. We got our web dot XML file ready. What do we need to do now? We need to build a jar. So I just have my servlets class, but uh, the uh, I've got a Java file, but I need to generate a class file. So let me compile this class. Mm. So my servlets class is test servlets, the directory. Okay, and within this, I'll compile my hello world servlet. So this is going to compile my hello world servlet and generate a class file right so here is it yeah. so now uh, in order to deploy uh, generate a jar file uh, and deploy it into tomcat you need to uh, follow a particular directory structure in which you need to put different types of files okay so let's see what is that so for tomcat this is my web application home directory okay and in your application home directory you need to create a web inf folder in which you put your web.xml file and in this as web inf and I put in my web.xml file in this and within the web.inf directory I again create a folder called classes where all my servlet classes and all the other java classes will go into okay. so my servlet class goes into the classes folder okay. So this is the directory structure uh, which I need to follow okay, in order to deploy this into Tomcat. Now let me simply go ahead and uh, build a jar file. I'll go to 
my web app directory hello world and I simply say jar cbf and I'll say include all files Okay, I haven't given my jar file name. So I'll say I'll name my jar file as hello world. Okay, one thing here is this should be a dot war file because uh, your Tomcat server expects a war file, right? So you simply jar it and you name it as dot war, okay, and not dot jar. This is one thing you should make a note of and I'll again say include all the files in this directory in this war file okay okay so here is it so this has uh, built a dot war file for me this is nothing but a jar right and uh, I've included the servlet class and the web dot xml configuration file to this war file okay so the next thing I need to do is deploy 